Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Invisible Head Investing. I'm the Invisible Head Investor and today we're going to talk about how hedge funds manipulate stock prices through short selling and naked shorting. So we're also going to talk about a few other things, so let's get started. Okay guys, so how short sellers force stock prices down? First of all, short sellers or hedge funds, they find targets. Okay, they look for certain companies um, that could be high risk companies, companies such as anything that's in the growth sector, anything with disruptive technologies, basically companies that Kathy Wood would have an interest in or biotech companies that are working on new drugs and they're waiting for FDA approval. Uh, maybe companies that are affected uh, like we just had in the past year, anything that was affected by the Roni, you know, that was in danger of, of losing a lot of money, potentially going bankrupt like AMC. These are companies that short sellers target and they target aggressively. A couple other uh, examples would be uh, penny stocks, companies under $5 with low market caps, typically under a billion dollars. So if you guys are investing in any of these types of companies, you have to go in with a mindset that at some point, some of your investments could be targets for short selling and aggressive short selling. Okay, and you have to be diamond handed if you be truly believe in the company. If you're getting into a company and you're just looking to swing trade it, make a few bucks and get out. All right, but just be, be ready to get out quick when you see the stock price dropping. If it's something like a conviction stock that you really believe long term um, is going to explode and you really have strong conviction, convictions about the stock, then you have to be able to ride the wave of the short sale attacks. But on the flip side, it creates a lot of opportunity uh, to buy major dips. You can get some new stock at uh, very attractive prices. You know, there's good and bad with both. I mean, it really depends on what your goals and your situations are. How short sellers manipulate stock prices. Okay, so first they take a short position to force the price down in an effort to trigger stop losses. Depending on how long you guys have been trading, I've been trading for a little over a year now. And we've seen it uh, just with GameStop and, and AMC. We've seen major short attacks where the price will drop 20, 30, 40% in a matter of an hour or less. Um, that's what's happening here. They, they basically take a large short position and force the stock price down. Next, they hire a variety of bloggers to write negative articles stating that the new technology is flawed or economic environmental changes will put the company out of business. They may target management, accuse them of being liars and thieves, or they can even accuse them of being incompetent. We've seen that with AMC, where the economic environments, uh, a lot of hit pieces were saying that the company's going to go out of business. Uh, analysts were downgrading their, their price targets down to one penny. Quote, unquote, analysts or other people that are potentially paid by these hedge funds to come out and put these rumors out. And I'm gonna show you guys a video a little later, maybe you guys have seen it, but in that video, a very well-known former hedge fund manager talks about some of this stuff. Um, they also link blog posts to social media to create FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So they'll take some of these blogs, some of these news articles, and they'll link it to social media platforms, or they'll hire employees with fake social media accounts to copy and paste negative comments on social media platforms that are talking positively about the stock. So if you see any tweets or uh, even on YouTube channels, a lot of our, our, a lot of the community, uh, we talk about growth stocks and we talk about uh, AMC, a lot of the apes, you'll see bots that are put out there by these hedge fund companies to put negative statements in the comments to say that, hey, they're going to sell or the stock's going to drop soon or whatever, you know, just to get paper handed people to sell the stock quickly and, and try to drop the price down through manipulation, through through uh, social media. Once they start doing this stuff, it kind of creates a snowball effect. OK, so they hit, they release the hit pieces on companies they target. Then law firms with a reputation of filing class action lawsuits for retail investors come out of the woodwork and sue these companies, creating more FUD. As negative sentiment about targeted company spreads, retail consumers sell because of FUD. Then the snowball effect begins if it hasn't already, okay? Once short sellers release hit pieces on companies they target, law firms with a reputation of filing class action lawsuits for retail investors come out of the woodwork and sue these companies, creating more FUD. These law firms put out articles and send, send emails to, or maybe letters to stock owners asking them or inviting them to join in in the lawsuit and they put some 
information in there stating why there is a class action lawsuit okay but it's all based on these rumors and the FUD that these hedge funds create and this further creates more selling okay as negative incentive about targeted company spreads retail consumers sell like I said hedge funds and market makers begin naked shorting stock and creating synth synthetic shares through naked call options allegedly again this is hard to prove but we know that it's going on I mean if you just take a look at what's been going on with AMC this past week We've seen volume of three, four hundred million shares being traded in a day. I mean, that's more than 50 percent to 75 percent of the available float traded traded in a day. I know Trace Trades has talked about it in the past where the initial squeeze back in January, we saw four times the available float trade in one day over a billion shares. That's not possible, especially with a lot of people holding. Uh, Adam Aaron came out and stated that three point two million Retail investors are holding AMC stock. We know that a lot of us diamond hand investors are not trading the stock. Yet you're seeing that many shares going back and forth, back and forth. Okay, this is hedge funds at work. This is naked short set selling taking place. And this is something that we as a community need to police ourselves because the SEC and all the other regulate, regulatory companies out there are not doing it. They're looking the other way. And the only reason that they're coming out right now and kind of state, making changes is because the retail investors are in an uproar. We're making noise and that's go that's what's gonna create change. Once we see all this naked shorting happening, a lot of these stocks start to bleed red for days, weeks, even months. Let's look at some examples of what I'm talking about. Okay, because I honestly believe that aside from AMC and GameStop, we saw the entire growth sector go through this. Okay, so these are some companies that I personally invest in. I'm heavily invested in the growth sector. And guys, look at your portfolios. And if you guys have been trading, investing for at least a year or longer, and you're invested in the growth sector, if you're a Robinhood trader or if you uh, make a lot of trades based on what the YouTube com community says, and we know that a lot of YouTubers were making videos about the growth sector, look at what happened. We have Art K, probably the flagship uh, out of Kathy Wood's portfolios. It hit a high of 159 right around February, beginning of February. And then it dropped all the way to a low of around 97, 98, $99, right? Jumia, this is a company that I was in since it was at $8, about a year ago. It hit peaks of 69, 89 and right around the same time, right around early February, it dropped right down to like around 21, $22. Palantir, I'm still heavily invested in Palantir. I actually took on more positions. It hit a high of $45, right? And then it dipped right after AMC and GameStop, tried to pull back a little bit right around the same time, and then it's been bleeding red. And it hit lows of around $16, $17, $18. NEO, NEO was flying high for a while. $66.99 was the high. And it dropped down all the way to around $30, just over $30. So you can see a similar pattern in all these stocks and many many more in the growth sector all at the same time this is not normal trading okay these are all independent companies in different fields okay this is like an Amazon company this is a, a electric vehicle company this is artificial intelligence and AI you know and this is just RK with with a bunch of different companies all targeting uh, disruptive technologies and all the same pattern that's because Hedge funds were targeting these companies and shorts shorting them, okay? And the steady decline for days and weeks and months, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly. This is naked short selling. This is not normal. This is a, st a stair step down, uh, short ladder attack taking place for weeks and months, okay? And I honestly believe that this happened because retail investors we're heavily invested in these companies and those same retail investors are major are a lot of them switched over to AMC and GameStop. And hedge funds know this. Hedge funds know what we're doing. Hedge funds have people watching YouTube channels and seeing what they're talking about, okay? It's not like it's a secret as to what the community is doing. And hedge funds know this. And again, this is a conspiracy theory. This is just my thought, but hey. Okay, so we know that Robinhood works with Citadel and we've heard that Robinhood sells data to Citadel so that Citadel can see what Robinhood's clients are doing, where they're setting their stop losses, what stocks they're investing in. And it's not strictly a Robinhood problem, but overall, those guys know what we're doing and what we're investing in. 
So think about it. And again, this is my conspiracy theory, but how do you get back at those people for making you bleed and making you feel pain now and making you lose billions of dollars? Well, chances are that a lot of these investors that were in these high growth, high growth stocks also had margin accounts and were heavily leveraged and buying AMC and GameStop. So the hedgies, in my opinion, started shorting the entire growth sector trying to force margin costs, trying to get some of these accounts liquidated so that there wasn't so much uh, buying pressure on AMC and GameStop or they were trying to trying to stop the squeeze. And obviously that wasn't working, but you know, because we all know what happened with Robin Hood and that's kind of what stopped the squeeze. But in the end, those guys made us hurt, made us bleed for months. And again, this is all stock man manipulation. What else do hedge funds use? Well, they use media and financial websites to spread fear. Hedge funds hire people to post negative articles on major financial websites like Seeking Alpha and Motley Fool on a daily basis. If you guys have been watching YouTube videos on some of the big YouTubers uh, covering AMC, you'll see articles on Motley Fool constantly posting something negative about AMC. You know, this is all part of the FUD that the hedge hedgies are trying to create in order to get us to sell. They have connections with financial news stations like CNBC to talk negatively negatively about the stock that they have targeted. Allegedly, again, this is everything is interconnected. What's the end game of these hedge funds? Well, typically, I believe they have at least two goals when it comes to manipulating the stocks. Maybe there's more goals, but these are the two big ones. OK, they hope to bankrupt the company so that they don't have to buy back the stock and they don't have to pay taxes on their profits. And they artificially force the stock price down and then reverse positions so that they can buy in a very low price prices and then ride the wave up. Mm -hmm. Buying billions of shares creates FOMO when they're purchasing the stock back and then retail investors buy back in when they see the stock price climbing dramatically. Okay, this is all part of manipulating retail investor psychology. Okay, when you start shorting a stock and you stop pushing the price down over a long period of time and the FUD kicks in, investors are getting out on the high end when the prices are higher and they're all just jumping out and it just creates a snowball effect and forces the price down when the price bottoms out that's when the hedge funds get back in okay when they're buying these large amounts of shares to get back in you see a pop in the price okay so these investors that were watching the price they're like okay we have to go back in and they start coming in in droves because FOMO kicks in and they don't want to miss out the write up and they're trying to recoup some of their losses that these hedge funds manipulated in the first place Guys, if this kind of manipulation doesn't piss you off, then I don't know what will, okay? This is an outrage, okay? This is, this is creating an, an unfair playing field where the retail investors are basically the personal ATMs for these hedge funds. They're ripping us off of billions of dollars every year because they have unfair advantages that they can use to manipulate stock prices. It's not about the fundamentals, okay? Warren Buffett talks about value investing. It's a whole new world out there. Yeah, you can still find blue chip companies that were beat down over the pandemic and then, you know, get back in at a good price. Um, and then if you're a long term investor, yeah, you can still find value in that. But it's a whole new world that we live in right now. OK, back in 1981, when everything went electronic and the paper stock went away, that's when everything changed. OK, and now with all the loopholes that are in place right now, um, it, it's just ridiculous. I mean, the SEC put rules into place to try to prevent naked short selling and make it illegal, but they left, I believe, allegedly, they left loopholes in place on purpose so that these hedge funds can take advantage of some of these scenarios, okay? And then when they get caught, if they get caught, the fines are ridiculous. I mean, come on, really. How do you plan on stopping the naked shorting that's taking place by giving out a few hundred thousand dollar fines or a few million dollar fines when these guys are making billions. There's no incentive. Okay, you know what the incentive would be? The incentive would be jail time. You stop putting jail time as a possible punishment and you'll see a lot of this stuff stop. All right, let's take a look at a video. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably seen it before. If you haven't, check this out. It's Jim Cramer. A lot of us know who he is. And look at what he says in this video. You know, a lot of times when I was short, 
at my hedge fund, and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. Uh, similarly, if uh, or if I were long and I would want to make things a little bit rosy, I would go in and take a bunch of stocks and make sure that they are they're higher, and I'd maybe commit five million in capital to do it, and I could affect it. Uh, what you're seeing now is maybe it probably is bigger market now. Maybe you need ten million in capital to knock this stuff down, but it's a fun game and it's a lu lucrative game, and you you can move it up and then fade it. That's all often creates a very negative feel. So let's say you take a longer term view intraday. And you say, listen, I'm going to boost the futures, and then when the real sellers come in, real market comes in, they're going to knock it down. It's going to create a negative, uh, negative view. That's a strategy very worth doing when you're value, when you're valued on a day-to-day -day basis. And I would encourage anyone who's in the hedge fund to do it because it's legal, right. and it, uh, it it's a very quick way to make money and very satisfying. Okay. Um, by the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I don't care. That's right, and you can say that here. I can't. I'm not going to say it on TV. Uh, well, on a related note, there's so many more hedge funds today than when you were right. managing your hedge fund. Right. Do you think that, that, does that exacessorbate the moves or does it make it well, you know, the, uh, the hedge funds are positioned long short, okay, not just long with mutual funds. So it's really vital these next six days because of your payday. You've really got to control the market. You can't let it lift. When you get a research in motion, it's really important to use a lot of your firepower to knock that down because it's the fulcrum of the market today. So I mean, let's say I were, uh, I were short. What I would do is I would hit a lot of guys with rim. Now, you can't foment. That's a violation of, of ferment. Yeah, you can't foment. foment. You can't create a yourself an impression that a stock's down. But you do it anyway because the SEC doesn't right. understand it. So, you, I mean, it's that's the only sense that I would say this is illegal. But a, a hedge fund that's not up a lot really has to do a lot now to save itself. So um, this is different from what I was talking about at the beginning where I would be buying the cues and stuff. Right. This is actually just a blatantly illegal. But when you have six days and your company may be in doubt because you're down, I think it's really important to foment uh, if I were one of these guys. Foment an impression that research in motion isn't any good because research in motion is the key right. today. So, you know, you would, you would hit this guy and that guy when you would see an offering. When you see a guy who's bidding, you'd wipe out that guy very quickly. What I used to do um, was called, if I wanted to go higher, I would take and bid, take and bid, take and bid. Um, and if, um, if I wanted to go lower, I'd hit an offer, hit an offer, hit an offer. And I could get a stock like RIM for maybe, that might cost me 15, 20 million, uh, Annie, to knock RIM down. But it would be fabulous because it would beleaguer all the moron longs who are also keen on research and motion. So There's I see, we're seeing, on today. We're yeah, we're seeing that. That's, you know, again, when your company's in a survival mode, it's really important to defeat research in motion and get the Pisanis of the world and the people talking about it as if there's something wrong with RIM. Then you would call the journal and you get the Bozo reporter on research in motion and you would feed that there's a palm's got a killer it's going to give away. These are all the things you must do on a day like today. And if you're not doing it, maybe you shouldn't be in the game. Uh, another stock that a lot of people are focused on right now seems to be Apple. Yeah, Imagine Apple's very that. important to spread the rumor that um, that both uh, Verizon and Bell and uh, ATT have decided they don't like the phone. Right. That's a very easy one to do because it's also you want to spread the rumor that it's not going to be ready for Mac World. And this is very easy because the people who write about Apple want that story. And you can claim that it's credible because you spoke to someone at Apple because Apple isn't in it. it doesn't, right, they're not going to comment. Not gonna right, so it's really an ideal short. And I would, again, if I were a short Apple, I would be working very hard today to get that. And the way you would do that is you pick up the phone and you call six trading desks and you say, listen, I just got on the phone with my contact at Verizon. He has already said, listen, we're not, we're at a lucky G house. We're a Samsung house. We, we, we're a Motorola house. There's no room for Apple. They want too much. They, we're not going to let them in. This is not, we're not going to let them do what they did to music. And, you know, I think that's a very effective way to keep a stock down. Right. I might also, by the way, because the stock at 84, 85, a little bit of capital, you go buy some January 80 puts that makes it look like there's going to be something going on. So maybe, you, you know, give Morgan an order to buy 1,000 Jan 80 puts, then you go position limit with, uh, you know, uh, you use a hat firm that doesn't know what the heck it's doing. Maybe go to UBS for puts. And, and you just kind of create an image that there's going to be news next week, and that's going to frighten everybody. Right. Then you, they all go out and say, large put buyer at uh, UBS. Then they call Pisani again. You have to use those guys and say, listen, I'm a buyer. You know, I see a big buyer puts, and I'm told that it's like it's SAC. You would do that too. Um, and these are all uh, what's really going on under the market that you don't see. Right, and don't, nobody else talks about right. it. What, what, what's important when you're in that hedge fund mode is to not do anything remotely truthful. Because the truth is so against your view right. that it's important to create a new truth to develop a fiction. Don't do anything truthful.
create a new truth? I mean, where's the ethics in this? There's no ethics at all. It's manipulation. I mean, this stuff enrages me, and you guys should be fired up about this stuff too. Honestly, I mean, why why isn't the SEC doing something about this? Jim Cramer is talking about this stuff. Now, this was never supposed to be released to the public, so I give props to whoever recorded this and released it, okay, because this was not supposed to be seen by the public. But proof right here, you have a famous on-air TV personality that works at CNBC who is a hedge fund manager in the past talking about the manipulation and the stuff that they used to do to manipulate the stock price so that they can get the end result that they wanted. How much more proof do you need? I mean, this is ridiculous. And um, the, the fiction is developed uh, by almost anybody who's down like 2% up 6% here. You can't take any chances. You can't have the market up any more than it is if you're up 6 Because starting Jan 2, you'll have all your money come out. So right. what would you do if you're in that situation and you feel like you're desperate? And you would do these actions. So you're talking about the mechanics of the market. Well, yeah, the mechanics are much more important than the fundamentals. Oh, okay, well, but in terms of the fundamentals, even writing about how you speak. Just about the fundamentals. Research and motion just blew out the cord. Right. But look what people can do. I mean, that's a fabulous thing. The great thing about the market is it's not... Who cares about the fundamentals? That's what I'm saying. This is a whole new world that we're living. Okay? If you're trading based on fundamentals and you're in a sector that could potentially be a, a target of, of major short sale attacks or short sell attacks, okay? Forget about the fundamentals, all right? If you truly believe in the stock and you think that there's growth potential over time and that the stock could blow up, all right? You have to stick to your convictions. You have to hold the stock, be diamond-handed, buy the dips. In the long run, you'll make out. That's how you're going to win. Because in the short term, if you're planning on selling because the stock drops 30%, well, you're going to keep losing money. Or you shouldn't be in this game. Okay? But if you're diamond-handed, you welcome these opportunities because you can buy more stock at a much better price. Nothing to do with the actual stock. Right. Now, look, over maybe two weeks from now, the buyers will come to their senses and realize that everything that they heard was a lie. Uh, but then again, Fannie Mae lied about the earnings for $6 billion. So, right, you know, it's just, it's just fiction yeah. and fiction and fiction. And I think it's important for people to recognize that the way that the market really works is to is to have that nexus of, of hit the brokerage houses with a series of orders that can push it down, then leak it to the press, um, and then get it on CNBC. That's also very important. And then you have a kind of a vicious cycle down. Right. And it's a pretty good game. And it can be played. You pay for a percent or two. Right. And then do you get long before Mac World and the expectation that the well, bonus is going to be bad. Bad. Right. And then he goes back to the Well, you got to use the other side. Interesting. Yeah, that, you know, there's a case where I would say the January 80 puts can be justified. Because after I've knocked the stock down at 80, I can buy a lot of common. And then you play it right into Mac World where they'll probably introduce the phone and Verizon's going to take it. Guys. Jim Cramer, former hedge fund manager, is talking about putting a lot of these things that we just talked about into practice. I mean, that's what these hedge funds do, right? So how do we stop this? I'm going to post a link down below of an article that I read. It talks about some of the stuff that we had just covered, but it goes more in depth as to what's really going on, how corrupt the whole system is, how the uh, DTCC is involved, how the SEC is, is clueless, and <clears throat> the loopholes that these guys implement you know, to get around things, how hard it is to police naked shorting. Okay, The only way to fight back is together as a community, ape strong, diamond hands. I mean, we have to cause enough pain to these hedge funds so they think that they think twice about doing this stuff over and over again to the retail investor okay we have enough technology we have enough people doing solid dd through wall street bets through other communities through twitter to share information through youtube okay guys like trade trace trades but we have enough people now involved that we are stronger as a group than these hedge funds are okay we control most of the money it will take some time, but if, you, if we hold our convictions, in the end, we'll be the winners. And we'll make these hedge funds bleed and suffer, and we'll create these short squeezes that'll put some of these guys out of business and change the market for the better, hopefully.
A lot of the stuff that they're doing is illegal. And if it's not illegal, they're using loopholes to walk that fine line, that gray area. But it's unethical. Where's the ethics in this? Guys, thank you for watching the video. If you stayed through the end, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave comments down below. Let me know if you guys agree with what I'm saying. Let me know if you have different opinions. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.